Hey guys, what's up? Ig Scoundrel here, and today I'm coming at you with a Rules of Survival video, Top 10 Tips on How to Improve. Now this is going to be a general strategy guide for Rules of Survival. Most of you will know that I do a lot of strategy things for Vainglory. I will be doing lots more Vainglory content, but because 5v5 is coming out soon, and because I love the 5v5 mode so much, I'm going to focus on that when I get the green light to do some 5v5 content. This is going to be my go-to guide to just get better at rules of survival. So if you ever need any help, you can always refer back to this guide and have a look on where you can improve or just if you want to take any tips from me as well. So let's start off with the first tip. Where the bloody hell do I jump? Because it can be quite confusing as a new player on knowing where to jump and knowing where the good loot is. Rules of, Rules of Survival does help out new players. It tells you how many people are currently on board, so it shows you how many people have jumped, and it also shows you the direction that your plane is traveling with a nice white line on the map. The red squares, or the red rectangles rather, represent the estimated range that you can jump. Now, if you release your parachute really early after jumping, you can get further, but this is literally jumping out, heading horizontally, so looking at the sky, and then releasing your parachute at the last moment. This is the estimated range that a normal jump will take you. The blue circles are areas that are likely going to be jump locations for a lot of players. They're going to have heavy loot, but they're also going to be heavily populated. You are also going to get some of the players that literally just parachute into the middle of nowhere, try and loot the odd house and hope that they get lucky with loot. Both tactics are something that you'll see a lot of people employ. Now, jumping to one of these areas that are highlighted in blue, these are the heavily built up areas like Echo Valley, Bitter Lake and Rust Bay, you are going to encounter lots of other players early on. The benefit of jumping to these areas is that the loot is good, and if you can get early fights and win, you're going to come out geared very, very quickly. So obviously, if you feel like you're good at shooting people early on, or you're happy to take the RNG game of am I going to get a gun first, these locations can be very rewarding, but they're also very risky. They are high-risk, high-reward jump locations. The second type of jump that I like to make is jumping to the very edge of my range and then running to a nearby location that is going to have loot. For instance, in this video that I'm about to show you, I jump to the edge and basically run to observatory because it's on the outside of most people's jumps range and I don't think many people are going to be there. The last tactic is jump into the middle of nowhere, hope that you get a car, and drive to a location. So you could jump and find a car, or a motorbike, or whatever, and drive to something like the research edifice, because it is way out of the range of this current plane's jump range, and realistically, you're not going to face many people there if you can get a car and get there first. So there are obviously a lot of different jump styles to Rules of Survival. As I've said, jumping to a high population location is going to be good for loot. You're going to get great loot from that kind of jump. Um, but obviously, you're going to face a lot of people early on because most people do that kind of jump. Most people like to jump in to the heavy uh, built up areas because they've just got really good loot there. The favorite jump that I like is jumping to the very edge of the range, meaning that I'm already cutting out players that either jump close to the plane or have jumped for heavily populated locations and then run to a location that I know is going to have good loot. Like I said, on this particular video, I jumped to the edge and ran for observatory, knowing that observatory has got on general pretty good loot and it was very, very unlikely to have anybody jump there either. The third is obviously going for that car tactic. It's just as good as jumping to the edge, serves the same purpose, but you also have to be sure that you're going to find a car. Otherwise, you could literally be stuck in the middle of nowhere with nothing to loot. So let's take a look at settings. I should have done this before the jump, but hey, better late than never, I guess. With settings, I like to keep everything default, including I use the tr traditional sniper mode, I use sports mode on the car. The only thing I've changed on my operation settings is I've dropped my character sensitivity down to about 30. Uh, anywhere between 25 and 30, I think is a good space. I use an iPad Pro 10 inch, so obviously I have to do longer swipes to kind of get the same level of uh, movement on my screen. But that's the, um, that's the sensitivity I use, it helps me aim a bit better, so feel free to copy it if you need to. On advanced settings, I used advanced mode to play the game. I used double tap to turn around simply because as long as you don't do it in the middle of a fight, it's a really good way of um, turning behind you if you're getting shot at behind. It, just, it instantly 180s you and allows you to fight them. And I keep aim assist on for the pure reason that if you are fighting someone and you think either someone's in a bush and you're trying to scope them out or they're on the ground, aim assist will allow your crosshair to stick to them. So if you're, if you're checking a bush because you don't know if someone's there, your crosshair will kind of stick on the bush and you'll 
you'll, you'll get the feeling that someone's in that bush because aim assist is kind of moving your crosshair towards it. So it helps you check hiding places a little bit more easily. I don't think there's any benefit for uh, turning it off. Uh, I haven't really played with it off yet, so I guess I'll have to experience, but it's really helped me. So I, And I really like the ability to check if people are hiding in bushes easily, so I keep it on. The next tip that I often see people forgetting to use is the eye tool. The eye tool allows you to look around you without actually affecting your current trajectory or the way that your character is moving. And it's a really good way to scope out the surroundings, especially when you're parachuting. The worst thing is if you're parachuting and you don't quite see someone behind you and they end up parachuting on top of you, getting a gun and killing you. Make sure you're constantly looking around you, not only when you're parachuting, but also make sure you're looking around you when you are also running on the ground or even when you're driving. It's a really good way to catch someone off guard and make sure you're covering all bases. It allows you to have 360 vision, which obviously just isn't possible in real life. And that means that you're able to then uh, catch people when they are sort of either trying to sneak up on you or you have an idea where everybody else is on the map. It's especially important, I think, when you're parachuting because that gives you that simple ability to be able to see where people are dropping and alter your drop specifically for that. The next tip is make sure you know how to gear, but also where to gear. When you first drop, you need to make a decision based on how many people have dropped around you and how much loot that you have at your disposal. For instance, if you dropped into a high population area, you grab the first thing possible and then you try and fight with it. Obviously, if you're fighting in an urban area or fighting indoors, it's better to have a shotgun because it's easier to hit, they do more damage on a single hit, and all you need is to get that one tap to kill someone. So if you are stuck in an apartment building and you know that other people are in there, make sure you're gearing specifically if you have a shotgun. As well as the fact that if you're, if you're dropping to a location with lots of people, you just find a gun and you use it. But if you're in my situation, where I know that I've dropped in an area where no one else has dropped, you can be a bit less hasty with your gearing. Try and gear for specifically what you want. For instance, my goal in this game, because I'm in such a remote location with the, uh, the, the, the likelihood that not many people are going to disturb me, is I want an assault rifle and a sniper rifle. It's a hard ask, but it's what I kind of want to win this game. My, my standard setup would be an assault rifle and an item that either complements long range or an item that either complements short range. I very rarely pick up handguns unless I'm desperate and I always avoid SMGs because they're terrible. So my advice in this situation was it would always be either go assault rifle shotgun or either if you're really, really lucky and you're in a situation where you don't have to be forced to have those two weapons. For instance, in my situation, I don't really have a lot of people around me, so I don't need to pick up a shotgun if, unless I absolutely can't find a sniper rifle. Pick up an assault rifle and then a sniper rifle. Those are the two best loadouts for me. Again, if you feel like you do better with an SMG, um, feel free to tell me, but I genuinely think they're all terrible. So I, my, my ideal loadouts are either going to be an assault rifle and a shotgun or assault rifle and a sniper rifle. It's also important to know what type of assault rifle that you want and what type of shotgun that you want. For instance, I really like the two-shot shotgun because it does the most damage. I also like the AK because it can act as a, a long-range assault rifle and it also does a significant amount of damage. Um, if you go for the M4, make sure that you search hard for those attachments. For instance, if you know that you want to pick up an M4 because it's a weapon that suits you, pick up those attachments beforehand to make it easier when you actually find the gun. But for me, the AK is the best assault rifle. I feel like it's got a uh, really good range, it does a lot of damage, and you don't actually have to gear it out for it to be that good. So in, for, I always like to try and go for an AK and then I add either the, uh, the two-shot shotgun or try and just find, find any sniper rifle. To be honest, I'm not so picky on the sniper rifles. They are all pretty good. Uh, the new sniper rifle with the, uh, the semi-automatic is, is quite good. I had a lot of success with it. But in general, I always like to focus in on an AK. An AK with the four times is like my perfect setup. And I think that's the, often the one that can get you so far throughout the mid-game. Next is knowing how to use your equipment. For instance, if you have a sniper, you need to have at least a four times scope to make it work. You can kind of have a two times with a sniper, but it's not that good. So if you invest in a sniper rifle, you also have to spend extra time trying to find the scopes to suit it. And speaking of scopes, let's run through the equipment and what, at what point in the game that it is good. In the mid game, when you have a huge amount of terrain to work with, you have long ranges of sight, you have loads and loads of people that will be around you, you can use height advantage and everything that comes with an open playing field, having a long range scope is good. Four times and eight times scopes rule the mid game, so if you can find them, you'll be really, really, really good in the middle portion of the game. As you go towards the late game though, and the circle closes in, everything gets a little bit more close range, things like 8x scopes become less important because 
you can't zoom in on someone in a final circle fight with an eight times scope because you'll be looking directly into their eyeball you need to have something like a two times or a red dot to give you that ability to scope in and be more accurate at close range as well. So you need to have, be equipped for the situation. The perfect setup is having a scope like a four times for the mid game and then picking up something like a red dot or a two times to make sure you have the ability to function in the late game as well. My perfect scope is the four times simply because I think it suits every stage of the game. You can still do really well in the late game with the four times and again it is very good in the mid game as well. Then having a look at your extended magazines and your rifle attachments. For instance, you can get an extended magazine, a quick draw magazine, and an XQD, which is an extended quick draw. An extended magazine essentially include it basically increases the amount of bullets that you can have in a single magazine, meaning that you need to reload less often. A quick draw magazine means that you reload a little bit more quickly an extended quick draw well you guessed it it's the two of them put together that is the best magazine attachment you can get followed by i think the extended and then third best is the quick draw when it comes to rifle attachments you have the silencer the compensator and the flash hider flash hider does what it says on the tin it basically stops yourself uh, giving off a flash when you shoot your weapon but it doesn't mute the sound and it doesn't really help in any other way shape or form so it's just purely for visual hiding of your gunfire a silencer also does what it says on the tin people can still hear your shots it, they are not completely silent but what it does do is it masks the direction that they come from on your opponent's radar at the top so you know when people are shooting it comes up with little bullets on the radar your opponent will not see where your bullets come from if you have a silencer and a compensator it essentially increases the accuracy and reduces the recoil of your gun allowing you to be a bit more efficient in the late game i think the silencer is the best mid game attachment for a rifle and the compensator is a best late game attachment for the rifle because at the end of the day when you're so close to each other they're going to see you anyway so what's the point in having a silencer flash hider sucks just put it on if you have to uh, when it comes to shotguns the bullet the bullet loops allow you to just reload um, a bit more quickly i think and on the choke it essentially reduces the spread of your shotgun giving you a slightly increased range and concentrating the damage a bit more i always like chokes i think chokes are just a good addition to shotguns in general so those are all of your attachments in the mid game you want to have long range scopes with a silencer in the late game you want to have shorter range scopes and you want to have something like a compensator just because it's going to help you be that much more efficient fighting toe-to-toe -to -toe when the circle closes in the next topic is quite a big one but we're going to try and chop it down into a simple form it is knowing how to play the circle playing the circle has two very distinct strategies and what i mean by playing the circle is knowing how to approach the circle moving in and placing yourself on the map to deal with that the two very distinct strategies of playing the circle are either go right to the middle of the circle or play the edge of the circle. Going right to the middle of the circle is risky in terms of fighting people, but is less risky in terms of getting caught out on the map. For instance, if you go to the middle of the circle, you can set up camp in a building or set up camp near some rocks or whatever essentially scope people out you'll always have people running towards you and it's very unlikely that you'll have to move until the very late game it can be risky in the sense that a lot of other people might try to do the same thing you have to be prepared to take more fights and obviously you're either going to have to get there by car or you're going to have to run across a lot of open ground so you're always going to be at risk of getting shot the other tactic is playing the edge of the circle. What I mean by playing at the edge of the circle is you always run to the edge of the circle location. The white circle, you go right to the edge of the white circle and then you wait. And every time that the circle moves in, you then follow the circle to its edge over and over again, moving around the edge of the circle until it gets really, really small and you meet other people. Now, a lot of people play this tactic, so you always have to be aware that there will be people around you. Anything that you do, another player is likely to do as well. So you need to think to yourself, how am I going to combat myself? So always be looking for locations that you would go to because other players might be there. And when you are moving in from the circle, my number one tip when following the circle is as when the new circle appears, do not run straight away. Give yourself a few seconds, 10 to 20 seconds, to see if anyone else has started running. If you run straight away, you are always going to be at risk of people coming from behind you and shooting you because they have been hiding longer than you have. 
leave it for as long as you think you can from how far away you are from the circle and then run as the circle either starts to move in or after you've given it maybe for sort of maybe to about 20 or 30 seconds until the circle starts to move in the longer you leave it the more likely it is it, it's going to be you that is sneaking up behind people when moving in from the outside of the circle on rules of survival realistically you can cover the map pretty easily so i always like to play the edge of the circle tactic because even if the circle disappears to the other side of the playable area you're very hard pressed to ever get caught outside the circle it's a lot more punishing on the computer variants like player unknowns and fortnite but on on rules of survival it's a little bit easier to get across the map so i always like to play the edge of the circle tactic it also means you can be a little bit slower paced and especially if you've got things like four times and snipers it's more likely that you're going to catch people out the next tip is alongside using the eye tool that we mentioned earlier you really need to be looking at your radar at the top the radar is a compass it tells you which direction you're moving in but also more importantly will highlight important events on the map and when i say important events i simply mean either someone shooting someone walking or someone driving those are the three big things that you need to look out for when someone shoots without a silencer, a small bullet icon pops up on the top of the map and it will tell you the direction that the shooter is coming from. It won't tell you the distance, you can kind of work that out from how loud the shot sounds, but it will give you the direct location that they are shooting from and that allows you to plan a, a, an approach of attack or try and sneak up on someone based on where they're shooting constantly be looking out for those kind of symbols on the map they will give you good information as to where your enemies are you also want to make sure you're listening out for footsteps especially if you are prone or crouched and you're hiding and you hear footsteps come past you footsteps only trigger if the enemy is running at full speed when standing up you will not trigger footsteps when you are crouched or when you are prone you can hear people crouch walking but it won't come up on the map the only time footsteps come up on the map is if someone is running when they are fully stood up. And cars will always give a sound wherever they are close to you. So you want to make sure you're using this information to consistently change the way that you are moving in the circle or the way that you are moving to attack someone or, you know, whatever you are doing on the map. This information should always be looking to alter how you play the game. If I hear someone shooting and there's no one around me, I will make it an obvious uh, move to try and sneak up on them slowly and try and find an opportunity to flank them and catch them off guard. Because if they're shooting and they're not shooting at me, it means they're shooting at someone else. And if they're shooting at someone else, their attention is likely to be focused on that person meaning it's more likely that i'm going to get in there and get a kill the next tip and this is a pretty important one is that from my experience rules of survival practically employs hit scan now hit scan is a term that we give that when you aim down the crosshairs your bullet will travel and hit the exact location that your crosshair is pointed at this seems to be pretty much the case universally across rules of survival a lot of other battle royale games employ bullet drop they employ travel speed so when you fire you have to fire in front of someone or you have to fire above someone because the bullet drops over the distance and you need to land at their, their head it doesn't seem to work that way in rules of survival it's pretty much aim the crosshair and shoot where the crosshair is and that's where the bullet will go so when you are aiming don't try to be fancy just aim your crosshairs at the person and shoot that is pretty much the biggest thing that i've picked up i remember when i first started playing rules of survival i started to be like oh they're about 400 meters away so i should aim a little bit up because the bullet's going to drop on them uh, i should they're running and they're in a car let me aim in front of them so the bullet hits the car when it goes past nope doesn't work that way literally just aim at them and shoot my next tip is take it slow patience is a virtue in rules of survival i talked about the circle tactic waiting till the last possible moment to move but this applies to the whole game Fair enough in the early game, if you, especially if you dive into a heavily populated area, you want to run, you want to get a gun, and you want to start firing at people. In the mid game, however, I very early, rarely ever stand up and run. The only reason I would ever stand up and run is either to cross a large open area like a road or a field, or if I'm really, really far away from the circle and I'm going to need that movement speed to get there. With good planning, and good positioning you should never really ever have to come out of the crouch position the crouch position has the benefits of the fact that you slightly increased um aim stability you don't give away your position with footsteps 
and you also don't ever obstruct your field of vision like you do when you prone. Proning is great if you want to hide, especially in the late game, if you're trying to reposition, especially out in the open, proning can be really good, but you get a very obstructed field of vision because you're on the ground, the grass gets in the way, the textures mess up. So really, pro uh, crouching has been my go-to position for pretty much all of the games that I play. And you should really never have to come out of it. Um, and, and like I said, I very infrequently come out of the crouching position, only when I know that I'm completely safe and I want to cover a large distance. But realistically, most of the time I spend crouching in this game. So that's what, kind of what I mean. You want to be able to take the game slow. Because Rules of Survival is so key with positioning, it's not quite as mechanically intensive as something like uh, PUBG on the computer because there are less kind of components to work with. It's all on the touch screen, so it's not quite as int intensive mechanically as something like PUBG or Fortnite. Which means that realistically, because it's quite hard to maneuver, because it's quite hard to uh, change position or that kind of thing, if you catch someone out, you're going to kill them. As long as your aim is good, you're going to kill them. So a lot of it comes down to positioning, and taking it slow gives you the best time to assess the circle, assess your positioning, and sneak up on someone. So take the game slow, guys. And my final tip, especially good for the late game, is always try to be a ninja. People are firing at each other, you always want to sneak up on them. Never be the first person to engage unless you're absolutely certain that you're going to get a kill. In the late game, your position matters the most. Hiding your position matters even more. So the only time that you ever want to open fire is if you guarantee yourself that you're going to get a kill at the end of it. And when you do fire, make sure you change position. There is nothing worse than taking a firing battle with someone and either getting a kill or not, but staying in the same position. Remember, unless you have a silencer, and even sometimes in the late game when you do have a silencer, you reveal your position quite easily in Rules of Survival because of the way that the radar works and because it literally tells everyone where people are shooting from. So you want to shoot, and if you get a kill, fine. Then move position. If you don't get a kill, move position again. If you watch the way that I played this late game, I skirted the outside of the circle, always looking in front of me to make sure that I could try and catch someone coming in, moving from the outsides in a late game circle. So it's very important to shoot and move. Take the shot that you know that you can get. Never try and take a shot that you just don't think that you're going to get a kill from. There's no point shooting for no reason unless you're trying to bait someone with a position and then move. But in the late game, it's especially important to shoot, then move. Never camp, because if you camp, the enemy knows where your last position was. So they're going to try and play around your last position. You want to shoot and then move and try and catch the enemy out. In this game, I shot and then moved a whole 180 round the circle without firing. And I found the person on the floor looking at my last shot location. Location. And that's what helped me win the game. So in the late game, it's especially important. Shoot and then move. So there we have it. Thanks guys for watching if you watched the entire way through. It was a long video with lots of tips in there, but hopefully it helps you get a start and improve your rules of survival gameplay. If you want more advanced tips, it's something that I'll consider doing in the future. I also want to keep doing my gameplay videos because I think they're fun and I just like playing the game. Uh, and I'll try and post a mix of both wins and, and non-wins non to make sure I can highlight where I went wrong so you guys can learn as well. But hopefully this was really useful for you. And um, if you want to know anything else about the game, please post in the description post in the description no i mean the comments post in the comments and i'll try and work on it see you later guys